Hello everybody, welcome to the Selfish Stream. Tonight we are painting the Tinkerer. It was very complicated <laughs> and very bright compared to all of the other ones that we've done so far. So this is going to be a little bit of an interesting challenge. Um, truthfully, I'm apprehensive because he's also just, he's, he's so small. <laughs> just, just so tiny. <laughs> Uh, and very detailed, so this will be interesting. As you can see from our hello, <laughs> Tinky Bink. Uh, as you can see from our previous week worth of streams, or four days worth of streams, we have the Prague Heart, the Scoundrel, the Mind Thief, the Spellweaver all finished, and the Brute still waiting. That will be tomorrow's project, at which point we will be done with starting six and can move on to something else. Um, probably battle stations. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. Um, so, I'm going to pick out some colors here. Base coat. So he's got a lot of, a lot of like, greebly little bits. Lots of little pouches and gears and metal plates all over his body, this guy. So we're going to need our... Let's see, where is it? We're going to need our... No, not tin. Our copper. So that's going to be a lot of all of this stuff on him. Uh, he also appears to be wearing uh, leather underneath his uh, his copper armors, um, and then he's also got sort of a brownish-yellow skin tone. <laughs> All I said about battle stations was just that, uh, that that's probably what we're going to move on to next after tomorrow's uh, painting stream for the Brute. Uh, so... Uh, we've got a couple of staple colors here that we're probably going to return to. So Parasite Brown is going to be the base coat for his uh, his leather stuff. It's uh, color number 42, Parasite Brown. The base coat, much of him in that. And we'll need something a little bit yellower for, uh, for his skin tone, a little bit more like yellow-brown. We're going to go with... Uh, Either filthy brown or scrofulous brown. Start with the uh, and filthy brown is going to be a little bit better, a little closer to what we want. So that's our filthy brown. Uh, we will also be base coating all of the uh, all the copper bits uh, with the same uh, parasite brown as well. So this is going to be the base coat underneath copper. Uh, there's also at least one to three plates on his body that are uh, more of a metallic color, or um, like a steel or or uh, possibly tin or bronze, uh, not bronze, um, silver, something. So I'm not thinking tin is probably going to be very good because that doesn't give them any contrast. So we'll go with... Um, Let's go ahead and make that gunmetal. So we've used that color a little bit on uh, on our mine thief over here, just to give him some kind of a like more of a grimy metallic color. Um, so that's what we'll use for his uh, his legs and left shoulder. Um, we do need a bright blue and a purple. So we're gonna go with. Mm, He's electric blue for most of the highlights, including his goggles, this weird chest piece Iron Man thing he's got going on. Uh, he's got one of his potion bottles is blue, and he's got a couple of little bits on his legs and, uh, and waist that are blue as well. They're a similar tone of blue. Uh, let's see... For our purple, we're going to use this Warlord purple, kind of pinkish, halfway between pink and purple. Um, that's going to do really well for that sort of like uh, pearlescent 
uh, steamy sort of look, smoky look. Uh, let's see. I'm wondering if I want to do some of this in brass, like mix copper into brass. Some of these bits. I don't think so. Let's grab up. Let's pull up some brass as well. It's going to be a little bit more orange than you would think, um, but it's still pretty yellow. <clears throat> and with that, black and a white, I think we are in good shape to start. We might need to pull out some additional colors in order to get some of these uh, weird little highlights going, but I think we'll be okay for now. So, oop. Be me dropping my color guide. No worries. Okay. Let's just get some of this out of the way so that I can start doing the base coats. So yeah, pretty much everything's gonna get uh, parasite brown except for his face uh, and possibly his hands. Probably, I probably want to do his hands in, uh, in this filthy brown as well. Two drops, filthy brown, and three drops, parasite brown to start with. Heroescape brown, no, I did not say heroescape brown. Uh, although, if anything, that's probably just the color of the plastic. So yeah, we got our three drops, parasite, two drops, filthy. I'll go ahead and thin it down. Just like normal. And, uh, oh yes, before I forget, let's pull out a wash color as well. Start us off. Let's see, we'll probably want to do... Hmm. Color check these. I think that this flesh wash, which is sort of like a red, brown, pink sort of color, uh, will be good for this because that will color check get wreck. Um, because that uh, that wash will let us kind of deepen these sort of red highlights that the art has. <clears throat> so we'll grab up, as is our usual, the three zero Torre brush. Get all of the soap out of that that we left in it last time to keep the bristles in good shape. And since I somehow managed to forget to do it, I'm going to also mix the actual colors. <laughs> I forgot to stir the thinner in. Beg pardon for the delay in getting started. This is sort of a uh, tedious. <laughs> That's all right, though. Okay. So, let's do our inside to outside painting process. Just going to grab up some of the yellower paint that we're using here. Our filthy brown. that all over the exposed portions of skin. If I can do it without getting too many air bubbles in there, that would be cool.
got his face all colored in there. And we'll get his hands. So there's a little bits of that exposed. See if we can get this paint around all of his uh, all of his greebling. They're not actually greebles, but they look like greebles. For those wondering, when I talk about greebling or greebles, that is uh, when a kit builder, particularly for film or TV. Um, and of those particularly for science fiction, um, when they want to show a uh, a model that has like a lot of that looks visually complex uh, without it necessarily having a complicated shape that's you know difficult or expensive to assemble, <clears throat> what they'll commonly do is add greebles, which is uh, little broken off bits of other kits uh, that just basically add visual complexity without changing the design complexity. So an excellent design of this is most of the ships in Star Wars are heavily greebled. Like, I would argue that that's one of the primary um, identifying features of a Star Trek, uh, Star Wars ship is that it's more greebled than normal. Um, the original Battlestar Galactica also had a lot of that sort of thing, um, where they had very simple, streamlined... Uh, blocky shapes, but then the actual surfaces looked really complicated because they had all these little bits sticking off of them. Um, the entire Death Star trench run is made out of greebles. Like, the whole thing. <laughs> like, all those little, uh, all those towers, all the weird little bits sticking up every which way. Um, those are greebled pieces. And that's also why when you look at the Death Star in further out shots, it looks very simple. You know, it's, it's a sphere with a line across it, and maybe a couple of other lines, like small lines, and then like a dimple on one side. But every time that you see a close-up shot, it's real complicated. And that's because they added greebles to the models used for those shots. It's very interesting. Um, Star Trek, particularly the original series, did not do very much with greebling at all. Um, and I'm not really sure why. Um, I'm glad they didn't, because it gave their ships a very iconic look that would have kind of gotten lost in the shuffle with all of the Star Wars knockoffs that were popular shortly after the release of that film. Um, so it, it continued to stand out after Star Wars was popularized. Uh, despite everyone else trying to imitate that that look and feel, um, but yeah, they they never used very many greebles, and so their ships looked just very streamlined and simplistic. Um, but they started with more complicated base shapes, which kind of helped it to stay identifiable and and interesting visually. Now you all know what greebles are. You're welcome. <laughs> Here underneath this little arm cannon thing, which I think is the flamethrower. I believe that's what that's meant to be. Some of this orange paint crept up on his face a little bit. I'll have to paint over that.
strange that he's got so much, like, samey type colors on him. Compared to everybody else who have a lot of different colors within, like, the same palette. He's just got, like, a lot of this orange color. Sort of copper and orange. Very interesting. Just to sort of contrast him with everybody else. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're going to want to base coat his legs in the same color as well, even though they're going to get a completely different metal color over them. And the reason that we're doing that is because that metal color we're hopefully going to be able to get to be uh, sort of similarly brown showing through, even though it's not going to look particularly brown to begin with. So, see if I can muster that. I'm not sure if I can make it work, but we'll see. Hmm. My playlist randomizer has declared that it's time to go back to Hoover Phonic today. Which I am down with. That's actually quite fitting for this mini. It's about as sci-fi as Gloomhaven gets. That's that leg done. Looks like it is both legs done, I believe. Just gonna blow on it a little bit to get those little air bubbles to pop. Can't seem to quite keep those from forming. <laughs> So not all of this crossbow is going to be these same colors. There's going to be some, some differences in color in here. But I'm going to wait until all of this base coating is done and uh, that most of it is handled before I go back in and re-detail it. I'm going to paint in those changes. Nearly got it. Just got to finish off this uh, crossbow. See, I've got two viewers tonight. Welcome, second person. Feel free to speak up and, uh, and engage with the chat. Okay. Okay, so that's the, uh, the parasite brown all on there. And um, we are gonna real quick uh, just go back over one part with the filthy brown because I accidentally covered it up a little bit. Just gonna correct that. Okay.
Okay, so maybe a couple parts, actually. So I didn't quite catch that when it was happening. Okay. Just going to give that a couple seconds to finish drying up before we go on to the next step. So while the last of that's drying up, we're just going to real quick mix up some flesh wash that we're going to apply over the entire thing. Get that in there. There's just a couple spots left that still need to dry. So, um, what was Luna's spot exactly? Did she sit on your computer or something? Okay, we should be good to go with the rest of this. Let's go ahead and apply this wash. See what results we find from that. Probably not be using this brush to do this, but for now I think that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, I am actually going to grab a different brush real quick. But it's going to be one of the crappy old ones. Yeah, okay. It just sort of grammatically fit with your apology. <laughs> Which uh, was a little bit funny in and of itself. Okay. So far this appears to be giving it about the color that I hoped. It's maybe a little on the red side, so I might want to go back over this with a sepia or umber. Probably umber. Just to make things stand out a little better. I think if I had been thinking this through from the beginning, I would have done a mix of the two instead of 
switching them out. I think that's okay. Should be all right. Certainly there's no rule against washing twice. Although I should not have used this particular brush because its bristles are a little bit too hard and I scraped some of the paint away. Yay. Huh. It's mistakes like that that remind me that I am merely intermediate. <laughs> So yeah, there's going to be a couple places on him that look weird for a little while until we get that fully repainted. That's okay. He'll be alright. Yeah, he's, he's starting to start coming together. It's not come together yet, but he's starting to start. Um, yeah, CP is probably going to be the tone we want for the rest of this. So that's going to redden him up a little bit, which is nice. And then sepia should kind of get him a little bit more in the shape that we want him in. Aviator boy, yeah. Uh... Well, he's actually got two pairs of goggles. That's, that's, I was noticing that as I was looking at the art more closely. He's got one set of goggles on his eyes and one set on his head and then one in the middle of his, like one single lens in the middle of his forehead. I do not understand this character's equipment. <laughs> So on the topic of who this particular character is in our group, his name <laughs> is Sunshine Dope Chillin' Drag Strip Twirl Shy. Just let that sink in. That's right, it's Sunshine Dope, no, oh, excuse me, yeah, Sunshine Dope Chillin', that's hyphenated, no, it's not hyphenated, it's, it's separate words, Dope Chillin' Drag Strip, which is hyphenated, <laughs> I don't even remember how it's spelled, but it is one of the most ridiculous names I've ever come into contact with. <laughs> So we need a softer brush for applying this uh, second wash so that I don't destroy any more of the paint that I've already put on. All right, let's check him again. Mm, yeah, some of it's starting to dry up. Not most. He's got a good color to him so far. It's not where I want it yet, but it's good so far. Let's
Okay, so I've just put out a little bit of sepia shade. And I'm going to apply it now while this is still a little bit wet in the hopes. Doing it that way will mix them together a little bit. See what happens. This is going to be kind of an experiment. You guys are all here watching me learn this in real time. Uh, okay. So this seems to look to look a little bit better so far. Not perfect, but it's uh, it's an improvement. It's a little bit more like actual shadowing instead of just sort of turning everything sort of pinkish. The way that it mixed with the flesh tone is useful as well. It's not perfect, but I'll take it. Okay, so that actually does need to dry all the way before we do anything else to him. Uh, so, go on a brief break. Come back once that paint is in a condition that we can paint over it. Real time is a strange and no blood relation, really nothing, yeah. So yeah, I was looking at the piece. I wasn't looking at chat for like two seconds. <laughs> Nobody panic, it's okay. Um, yeah, no, I'll be right back with you. And we will keep going once the paint, once the uh, washes are dry. So yeah, I'll be right back.
All right. So uh, during the break, uh, while this was drying up, uh, let's actually give this a look on the camera. Uh, I went ahead and uh, took the liberty of mixing up a couple more colors, um, just a couple of, uh, of shades and tones for our brown here. It's looking pretty samey right now. But that's because each area is getting a slightly different treatment over the same base coats. So we've got a dry brush right here. And I'll be picking up some of our, uh, our colors that we've been working with up to this point and applying them uh, mixed with blacks and whites, depending on exactly what we want each area to look like and, and do. So we're going to darken him, in, gar wow, darken him up some uh, on all of the areas that don't have their the metal bits. So on this top bit of his legs, we're going to sort of gray that up. And we're going to do the same thing to the areas around his midsection and 